And you're back on the Mountain Morning Show, continuing our conversation, talking about the PC Caps program. So, Mo, we left off, uh, kind of talked, giving an overview of the program. How does funding work for this? Because what you guys are doing, you're bringing in so many organizations, giving so many uh, things, of, making so many things available to students. How are you funding this? Well. The, f the initial funding will be, we've set aside a certain amount of money in this year's budget for startup costs. And in addition to that, we have a matching grant from Workforce Initiative from the governor's office. So that'll be the initial funding of it. Now, as the program starts to roll out, what people have to bear in mind is we're not necessarily going to be adding on to our existing programs in the sense of staff, et cetera. The ideal world will be we'll be using our existing teachers in this program. So if a teacher right now is teaching six classes at the high school, maybe they're only going to be teaching five classes at the high school. But as we shift students over into the program, you're going to have less <coughs> students in the traditional program at the high school during that time of the day. They're still going to be, and that's a key point, they're still going to be coming to school, taking their AP classes, taking their core curriculum. However, in the afternoon, they may be going to work for a local entity they're going to have a teacher mentor responsible for them. So that teacher may have a smaller class size to work with in that sixth period, or even fifth and sixth period, depending on how many mentorship programs they have in there. So it's really not a financially intensive program to run. The initial startup is really just getting, um, Jen's going to be doing a lot of this work, is getting local businesses, local entities educated on what the program is, getting them involved in it. Um, the other thing we need to mention is that we're, the ideal goal is that these will be college um, credit courses. So we're going to be doing a lot of work with local universities uh, in the state of Utah, hopefully outside of the state of Utah at some point. But um, you know, if somebody is taking a engineering, as Jen mentioned earlier, we might be working with the University of Utah. They'll develop the curriculum together. So even for the companies, it's not so much that they're going to be putting a lot of capital into it. The capital they're going to be putting into it is human capital and resources. So if we work with an engineering firm, we're going to be sending one of our students over there. They're going to be working on their project in their building. So we're going to be asking for a mentor at the engineering firm. We're going to be asking for space at the engineering firm. However, we're going to have a teacher on our side mentoring that student. So it's not, like, as I said, it's not financially <coughs> intensive in the beginning. Um, nor should it be at any point going down the road. It's, it's really going to be a question of where we're going to be allocating current resources as we see the shift take place. Wonderful. And, and we mentioned during the break uh, talking about this is the first of this type of program in the state of Utah? In or the, what would you say? It's the first in the state of Utah at this level. We've modeled this on the Blue Valley School District in Overland Park, Kansas. Um, they've been up and running now. This is their third year, I believe. Mm -hmm. Their third year. Uh, it's been an amazingly successful program. Um, we are working closely with Blue Valley School District on this so that we're getting their expertise and learning where their pitfalls were. Um, I fully expect this, if we're successful, which I believe we will be, that this will be replicated throughout the state of Utah. Wow. It, it, to me, it makes perfect sense that we might have different needs in Park City or our students might have different desires than a student, say, in Logan. Where somebody up there, I've used this before, they might be interested in agricultural engineering. We don't have too many students in the Park City School District probably that are interested in that. However, even if we had one student, and if we had a sister relationship with Logan where we could do something exchanging students, it would be great for all students. Mm -hmm. so, so it sounds like, I mean, you have the uh, curriculum, the ideas set in stone, but if there is a change that needs to be made or, or in addition to help out one individual student, you're willing to help them in the way they want to learn. Well, in most cases, each project that students are working on is a personalized learning experience. Mm -hmm. So say I've got four or five students uh, putting together a marketing plan for a local company. And <coughs> one of them may be doing the graphics on the website. One of them may be programming the website. One of them may be building an app. Another may be writing the content. So each of those is a very personalized experience depending on what the student is looking for. And what we'll have is they'll sign up, say, for the global business curriculum. And then within that, we'll look at the projects we have and place students in the project based on their interest and their abilities. Um, 
Very good. So what well, is the... Well, I, I think this is such a shift from the traditional instructional mode. Mm -hmm. I think most people think of school as being in the classroom, you know, you have rows of desks and that. But this type of an approach, again, is a collaborative approach. It's, it's a, it, a definitely increased rigor. It is preparation for future careers, and it does place them in a professional work environment. And, and as Jen has, has talked about, it's a collaboration between uh, groups of students working together with employees. And uh, it, to me, I think it's just uh, the way to go. It's, it's going to really help our students become much more prepared for their futures. And, and one of the questions we've been asked is, uh, what, what, what is different from this in an internship program? Yeah, I was um, going to ask okay, that, so there, there seems yeah. to be some similarities. Well, there are, uh, there are some. Um, I spent most of my career in the financial markets. And so when we had an intern show up, which we had every year we had interns show up, Generally, they were the gophers in the company. I hate, you know, you hate to look back on that and say how much time we wasted, but it was they were doing back office functions or they were doing very menial tasks within the company. Yeah, and sort they're of, kind of irrelevant. They I were mean, not to be retired. No, to <laughs> some extent, we've all been in that position. We all have, and the difference in this, as Jen pointed out, is they will have a defined project. So they're not going to walk in and say, "Let's sit around for six months and try to figure out where I can do something." They're going to have a defined project on day one when they walk in. They're going to have a mentor who's responsible for that. Um, and if we look at Blue Valley's success, just to highlight a few of them, they have one student that last year received eight patents on a hydrogen-based fuel cell car. That's fantastic. Um, they have another one that has done a marketing program for a national yogurt chain. Uh, frozen yogurt chain that they keep trying to call him back and he's uh -huh. in college now and it's kind of interesting there. Wow. Another student developed portable uh, reservoirs for the United Nations for Somalia. So these are real projects that students are getting not only the hands-on experience of doing it but also seeing it come to fruition. So to me that's that's one of the key and the superintendent touched on it which I, we can't stress enough. This is going to be tied into the same academic rigor at Park City High School as we expect in our core, uh, core classes. Mm -hmm. And it's really just going to enhance it. And to me, as both a parent and a school board member, I've looked at it as from the other side too, which is, as Jen pointed out, you might have a student who thinks they're interested in medicine. But when they go to, say, work at the hospital and they realize they don't like blood, it's probably not a good mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. to go into. However, um, some might love it and that might be the great experience for them. Some might think, well, I want to be in graphic art and realize they don't have the math skills that they might require for that. And we're hoping that that it motivates them to come back to the traditional high school at the same time and continue to work on those skill sets. So I think it's going to be um, really collaborative, not just with the companies, but within the current high school structure in strengthening what the students are learning. Well, I think you bring up a good point, which is for high school students, oftentimes it's a really big leap between what they're learning in the classroom and how they will be applying it in their future lives and in the real world. And this is a great way for them to start making those connections um, in their head. You know, there is a reason that I need to know grammar and write well or speak well or do math or, you know, um, or know the scientific method because those apply in the real world. Mm -hmm. So when does the program kick off. We'll be launching for fall 2013 right. um, and it will be in the course catalog in February so we have a lot of work to be done between now and then. Very good. Well a lot of exciting developments happening. Along with that, how do, how do students, uh, are, are, how, how do they register for the program as the school a season comes around for next year? How does that work? Right. It will be in the course catalog in February so they'll be able to sign up for it as a, as a regular course. Um, it will be half day, five days a week, or half day every other day. We're not 100% sure about that yet. So it is a significant commitment, and um, they will be getting college credit for the course. So we're excited about that. Great. And once again, it is for juniors and Juniors seniors. and seniors. All right. Well, thank you right. so much, Ray, uh, Mo, and Jennifer. So great to have you guys on the show. And thank you for filling us in on this, this wonderful program. I'm really excited to see the developments that, that take place over the next year and, and in the coming years as, as hopefully more uh, school districts take it on. And everyone can find more information about the program on the website. Perfect. And what's on the website? pcschools.us. Click on the CAPS link, and there you go. All right. Thank you so much. The three of you, we sure do appreciate you coming here this morning. Thank you very much. And we'll Thanks be right back here with more on the Mountain Morning Show. Stay with us.